As the Second World War ended and heroes returned home, the economy slowly started to recover and grow. One of the best indicators of the dawn of the new era, surprisingly, was general aviation. It was a time of opportunity for manufacturers to compete and conquer the hearts of the ex-military pilots. Some offered practicality, others speed and luxury. But they all shared one thing, an eager will to innovate. Welcome to Big Metal Birds, and in this video, we will tell a truly unique story of the Cessna Model 310. Despite not being a historian, I can definitely tell that post-World War II era was the true renaissance of general aviation. Hundreds of new civilian models emerged from the blueprints of the military aircraft of past years, and Cessna was first on the list of manufacturers that were ready to adapt to the new era. Starting with Model 140 and following with 120 and 170, the sales were great. But to cover the needs of a wider array of pilots, you need something more than just a light four-seater tail dragger. Piper sensed it earlier, and in 1952, the prototype of Apache took to the skies. It's about that time Cessna had just started to work on the early concepts of their first twin. In order not to lose the race, the development of the 310 was quite rushed, with many engineers spending days and nights at the factory. Technically, it wasn't the first twin made by Cessna, but the massive T-50 was a thing of the past, and a list of bold requirements for the new 310 made the project even more challenging. Eager to comply with the new trends in aviation, Cessna made a brave decision. Get that wing down. Yeah, Cessna, probably influenced by Apache, and despite the hot sales of the 170, put the wing low. To add more challenges to the engineers, this plane should have had a tricycle landing gear, be able to retract it, and despite having two engines, should still be able to fit in the T-hanger. Among all of these features, the most noticeable one for the Model 310 is its fuel tanks. Located on the tips of the wings, they were marketed to increase efficiency by reducing some drag. I've never found the actual research that proves it, so I won't sign under this statement. But what I eventually did find is that the patent for the tanks located outside of the structural fuselage belongs to Kelly Johnson, who worked at Lockheed designing the famous P-80. While it's not the same type, as the fuel tanks of the Shooting Star are technically located under its wings, it's clear to see Cessna's inspiration. Anyhow, the sleek lines of the new plane, and perhaps the low wing, sparked the initial sales of 310. An interesting fact is that not only catchy marketing posters did the job, Model 310 was featured in one of the popular American shows of that time, The Sky King, where the main character used to fly its 310 named Songbird. Combine clever marketing and lots of innovative features that the pilots of the post-war era were eager to test, and you will have more than 500 planes sold in three years. Yeah, that might not be that much when compared to smaller Cessnas, but remember, it's a twin, and it was expensive, so it was enough for Cessna to move on with the upgrades. The initial model was a four-seater and had a pair of 240 horsepower carbureted Continental 470 engines. In 1958, Cessna swapped the engines for the newer M modification, increasing the takeoff weight and adding an extra window and new instrument panel. In 1959, Cessna introduced the D variant of the same 470, 260 horsepower, fuel-injected type, again increasing the maximum weight. 1960 saw the first upgrade to the fuselage, a swept tail for the 310D. Quite a thing of style at that time. Later, Cessna introduced such changes as canted tanks in the G variant, supposed to add stability in flight, as you can imagine the amount of inertia this plane might have. This model also featured a six-seat cabin layout, which, not so surprisingly, eliminated any space for aft baggage. Another notable change was a baggage compartment in the rear of engine nacelles that came in the I variant. The L variant was the first to feature additional fuel tanks inside the wings. An interesting fact is that at some point, Cessna 310 could have six tanks, two tip tanks, 
two wing ox tanks and two nacelle locker tanks, with total stored fuel being over 200 gallons. Models P and R top the list of upgrades with turbocharged 285 horsepower Continental TSIO 520 engines and a whopping 31-inch longer nose for the R variant, which now can store up to 350 pounds of baggage in the nose compartment. Despite being the last produced, the 310R remains a dream to fly for many pilots. Let's see the specs of this particular bird. The all-metal body for the 310 has a length of 32 feet, thanks to its long nose, height of 10.7 feet, and a wingspan of 37 feet. A pair of Continental TSIO 520 turbocharged 285 horsepower engines spinning Macaulay three-bladed constant speed props will let you cruise at around 220 knots, with its maximum at around 250 knots, depending on weather, altitude, and weight, of course. Remember I told you about the absurd six-fuel tank system that some variants had? Thankfully, the most popular option is four fuel tanks, tip tanks and ox wing tanks. The problem is, the ox wing tanks also can be 30, 40, or 63 gallons. So, yeah, there's some math to be done. The most popular options from the ones I saw on tradeaplane.com was the 163-gallon variant. This one will let you cruise for around 600 nautical miles, again, depending on weather, load, and altitude. The cabin is designed to accommodate up to five passengers. Well, a single sentence could sum up what it's like to be inside a 310. It's a standard Cessna interior. Like, really, it's spacious enough for five, better for four, has enough light, materials and upholstery are nice. So, you know, classic Cessna practicality which is fine if you're not comparing it to the chic and luxury of Beechcraft, for example. Overall, it's quite comfortable and even cozy enough for a flight wrapped in a warm blanket. Unless you're the pilot, of course. In case you're interested in purchasing the 310, thanks to the lots of variants, there are options for different budgets. Prices span from 55 and up to 250 grand. The fact that planes, unfortunately, just like all of us, don't get any younger adds a lot, because the tricky fuel system was tricky enough 70 years ago, and now, let me just say that the maintenance bills can be, to put it mildly, substantial. Of course, the cost of maintenance will vary depending on the overall condition and the specific variant of the 310, but just be aware of it. In the world of twin-engine aircraft, the Cessna 310 has rightfully earned its place. Its powerful engines, sleek design, innovations, and numerous variants make it a standout in its class. Thank you so much for joining us on our journey. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Fly safe, and until next time.